But in the midst of even pain, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of trouble, the Christian is peaceful. He has peace, peace within. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And uh, we go to the Greek uh, translation. He translates this very peace as a rene. A rene is, he says that it's a state of being in accord or in harmony. If you are in a relationship, in the kind of relationship that you are in, and if it's about any endeavor, anything that you are doing, this a rene symbolizes or depicts the kind of harmony and the kind of conclusion. There is an agreement, I don't know what that way to use, but there is some calmness, there is some peace in every situation that you find yourself, whether it's in a relationship or whether it's in something you want to do. You are not agitated, you are not troubled. You are not worried, but you have that peace of God. Even in the midst of something very, very troubling, you will have that kind of peace. Amen? And uh, we all have heard about the word Shalom, which is the Hebrew word for this peace. The Hebrew word for this peace is Shalom. And uh, we are told that this is a common greeting for the Jews. Shalom in peace, that the root way of this shalom is that you will be fulfilled when you meet a Jewish man and he says shalom, it means you will be fulfilled, you are complete, you are kind of, you have everything go on, may everything be whole for you. That, that there is a unity of purpose in everything that you aspire to do. All that which you think about may that be peaceful. Shalom. Shalom. May you be prosperous. May you have health. And may you walk and do everything in safety. That is the root way. Of shalom. So shalom is not just about peace, but it comes everything and takes everything that concerns you as a human being. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But what is very important that we need to realize is that uh, the, the Christian life is full of comfort. In fact, if um, this morning somebody is here that there is nothing that is on bothering your mind, you are highly, 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 highly favored and blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And we can't go for your life. But 99% of us, there is something that is bothering us. And that is what even kind of motivates or pushes us even to pray more. Hallelujah. It's not that we have everything and so we want to give praise and thanksgiving and honor on you, but there is something that is pushing us. And in all that conflict, you will see the Christian in that peaceful mood. Why? Because the Spirit of God, God the Son, and God Himself. They are symbol of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, your amen is an amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Why is it that we are conflicted and we are faced with so many things that really bother us? But you can just come to church or be in your closet or in your house or wherever, and you show that kind of joy, that kind of uh, peace in your life. Why? Why? Why is it so? Why? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
Why? Because the Spirit of God Christ is off and God is off. They are peace. The Lord he broke down the wall of partition. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because for the unbeliever, even the person who doesn't believe God, he does things and something can see that this thing will be check yourself. Listen. Man is a director for God. Hmm? Without Christ, I don't know some of you may some of you will say that uh, you just go to know Christ the day you were born. But some of us we have done some things in the bar. And the grace by faith was made manifest on the world. And so we saw the love of God in our lives. And that gave us peace inwardly to know that the Lord is with us. But for those who are alienated from God, they don't have that. They don't. And so every now and then they believe that there is something that is either going to happen to them or there is something that somebody is going to hold against them. Why? Because they have not been reconciled with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we have peace. Also, could you read? Let's see a scripture here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. And the very God of peace, the God of what? Peace, sanctify you whole. And I pray with God, the whole spirit and soul and body be preserved and blameless unto the coming of our Lord. The student of the Bible, what I want you to, to note is that God, He who delivered you, who sanctified you, He is God of peace. And we will come to realize that the whole Trinity is peace. And that the Lord is saying that when you talk about the fruits of the Spirit from salvation unto our death, everything that we do are these. These are our guiding principles as Christians. God Himself is a God of peace. And it is He who has sanctified us holy that our spirit, our soul, and our body will be, pre will be preserved, blameless unto the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God Himself. And so the Trinity Himself is peace. And if we read uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, when you know, the birth of the Messiah was announced unto us is born, or uh, to us a child is born, and he shall be called wonderful, he shall be called counselor, he shall be called mighty God or mighty father. Mighty God, the everlasting father, and his name is the Prince of Oh, I think it's only Pastor Prosper. And the Son of God. As he comes to this world, and his name shall be called Prince. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, you all put my hands together for the Father. The one who gave his life for me, who shed his blood for me, the one who promised me of the Spirit of God to be in me, to lead me into all truth, he himself is called the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14, 
there were, it's a very powerful word of God that it is, it is the one who is of a peace who just broke down the dividing wall of hostility between you and that which is always worrying after your spirit. Hallelujah. For he is our peace, Christ Jesus, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Hallelujah. This rendition or explanation is about the Jews who depended on the law of Moses. And the fact that they are chosen, they didn't want to have anything to do with me and you as Gentiles. Because we, by actual or physical birth, were not children of Abraham. But by spiritual birth, because of the blood that was shared at Calvary Cross, and the other symbolic representation was that also when the people of the Jews, when they wanted to see God, they wanted to go to God, there was a very big veil. It's only the priest, the high priest that goes into the inner chamber to make atonement by the blood of bulls and sheep and lamb and whatever on behalf of the people of Israel. So as the chief priest enters the inner chamber, whatever he does there is between him and God. And he is doing so even on our people on behalf of the people of Israel. To the extent that you are not permitted or able to go into the inner chamber, so when he is going, they tie his rope around his waist and we bears. And as he's performing the function, then the bell will be ringing, and they know that he is acting. He is there. But when the bell noise is seized, or you don't hear, it means God has struck him dead. Hallelujah. And because they couldn't get into the inner chamber, then they would have to pull the rope and bring the high priest from the inner chamber. Hallelujah. So when Christ Jesus on the cross, when he said it is finished, then witnesses in the tabernacle realized or saw that that inner wall or inner chamber which separates the high priest and the people of God, that was torn into two and fell down. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is Christ himself who tore down that wall to reconcile us unto him for God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he is our peace. For he broke down the broken wall. And as I said, the second broken wall is for the Gentile, for me and you, to be reconciled to God because of the blood he shed a cow and cross. Other than that, it is only the Jew who were the acceptable children of God. And so the Jews will look down upon us and will not have anything to That is why in the Bible, Jesus Christ, did uh, made a lot of examples of spoke about the Jew and the Samaritans. Samaritans were like Gentiles, like me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So he brought down this wall to just reconcile us to God. And so we now have peace. I was imagining when I was reading this scripture. I was imagining that had they been these two, these two occasions or these two scenarios where there is a set of people, if they need anything, they have to go to somebody to make whatever they want, whatever they need, no the person who can provide. Hmm? So there is a human element there. 
And then another section where they need something and they are already or they have already access. Uh, I, 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 let me bring it down. Let me bring it down. If there is a human interface between what you want and the person who can provide, when you get there, it's most likely that you will see that everyone who is trying to meet that person, that is the mediator, the one who is supposed to take you to the one who will help you, people will go with gifts to influence you. Now, the lie and the kill you will meet, some with car, some with goats, some with fire, some with silver, some with gold. And you look at the line and you will be told. You will realize that you don't have a chance because not all these figures are equal. And so you go to the place and you saw the kind of things that people like bringing to influence the mediator before you get to the one who shall who could provide. But well, you will be discouraged. But then you read that place and you go to the other scenario where you go there and then people are dancing. They are at peace. They are shouting. He said, oh, I just went to tell whoever my petition and uh, he has done. Say, how? You? As we speak, yeah, if you have something to do at last time house, before you take a step, they haven't called you, they haven't invited you. But wherever you are, before you decide to go to that place, you would have thought a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things would have gone through your mind. Because you need to know somebody who knows, somebody who knows chief of staff and so who knows. Hallelujah. Yeah. But we have this because the Lord Himself has reconciled us that in your trouble and in your problem and in your difficulty, you Is that not something that gives you peace? Hey, is that not it? Hallelujah. Amen. So Christ is just something, and the Spirit of God was okay. I was talking about the Trinity that is characterized by the peace, peace. And even Galatians chapter five verse twenty-two, he says that this is the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Allah, joy, peace. So, peace itself by the Spirit, by the Spirit, is the name. Because it is, the, it is the fruit of the Spirit. So, the Spirit itself is peace. The God of peace, He is our peace. Christ is our peace. The Spirit of God. Is. So, the Trinity is just our peace. And therefore, we may walk in a situation that is so difficult that we cannot even understand that it bothers and it troubles us. We walk in suffering, but we know that the Father, the Son, or Spirit of God, who are our peace, they are our peace. That's what the Son said. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I see therefore a God. The, the shout and the threatening of death and of sickness and all that. But I walk in peace because I know you I have believed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the peace of God is not something about something without pain. 
It's not something about without maybe suffering. It's not something about see if we were to have everything that we ask for. The session might say that oh then we will not be you know agitated we will we will you know but, but the fact that you are in the midst of something that is agitating the fact that you are in the midst of trouble the fact that you can smell death you can smell pain and suffering the one you love you pray and the person is not being healed yet you have peace. For the spirit that he gave you is symbolic of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He's a God of peace. And uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, he says that being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We were justified by faith only by our faith that allowed us to be at peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. And the Lord himself said that, hey, I come and I leave you my peace. My peace. Do I give you not that as the world gave? John chapter 14, verse 32. These things that I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. John 16, 33. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And as we have peace in, within ourselves, we have peace with the Spirit of God, peace with the Son, and peace with the Father. The Bible also then enjoys us to have peace with one another in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. That follow peace with all men and in holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said that without which no man shall see God. Follow peace. Follow peace with all men. And in holiness, without the peace and without the holiness, no one can see God. Now, what is important if we are denied or seemingly denied of the peace of God? Amen? Amen. How do we experience this peace of God? How do we get this peace of God? Because there are so many Christians who let me say, bring it out that the opposite of peace. Uh, I think uh, this is not the Bible saying You yourself, fire away. What is the opposite of, opposite of peace? If I ask, a lot of ways will come up. But I will, what will come up on my mind really is uh, worry. Uh, if uh, if you are faced with something that you know is untoward, you will be worried. Amen. You will be worried, and uh, you will be in trouble, or you are troubled, or you have a kind of unrest, or a kind of uh, a, a confrontation. Hallelujah. And so we see these in our lives every now and then. And therefore, it's not really what Paul and the scripture admonishes us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what in actual fact, what or how do we experience this peace of God? Um, I'm finishing with that because I said it in minutes. The peace of God. By what? And uh, as Bible students, you yourself pick the reason or the way that you can have peace with God. But uh, for me, I realize by the Spirit of God that one, 
We have to believe the word of God. In every circumstance and in every situation, what does the word say about that circumstance? What does the word of God say about that situation? And when you have a word related to a certain circumstance, related to a certain situation in your life, you will have peace. Because the word, the Bible says that God watches over his word to perform. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That God does not lie. He is not the son of man that is lie. <laughs> Has he said it, would he not do it? Has he spoken, would he not make it good? So one, by the way of God, and uh, if you add the two, that is by faith, I'm just can't I'm, it's a small difference that I will read for the Wednesday Bible say. But faith, and you are right to say ah, but by faith also because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. And so you will add you will say that you also faith and the word of God. But then it's a small, it's a key lie. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because somebody might not have faith, just as you have. But the person believed in a certain way that he had. He might not even be a Christian. But because of what he had had, it can come him or her now, even without it. I think this is it's a I mean you 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 are in trouble and you realize that this actually, this actually happened. My sister told me in this situation uh, that um, the late Akosiachi, Akosiachi, he he was the mayor of Kumasi, and he was powerful. He was really powerful. And they, 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 this is a person or somebody did something on top, and the city guards got him, and they wanted to deal with him. And by a fluke of uh, luck or whatever, he lifted his hand, his eyes, and saw Abus Ajima, of the mayor of Akai, the city guard, he went and Abus Ajima. And when he saw him, he started shouting, Baby, he saw me out. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of anyone. He's holding Nana. He's holding Nana Abus Ajima. And Nana head. And when he said, say, oh, what is that? Even though the guy is a criminal, bad guy. Because the lion is saying, me, he's only the lion, I'm afraid of me. So we are looking at me, I'm afraid of him. And I said, oh, I can't say that. He said, oh, man, oh, man. We are afraid of him. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, no, my friends. But by way, hallelujah. So, we have the peace of God by His word and by faith and also by prayer. I would have not to go in on, on the days deeply, but uh, because of time. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. In Isaiah 26, verse 3, the Bible says that you know that we we set our minds on God, for if we do so, He shall give us peace. The, the very scripture is, okay, they are there, they shall not live. Isaiah 26, Isaiah, no, it's not 26, 14, it's 26, Isaiah 26, verse 3, 26, verse 3. That will give Him a perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him? Hallelujah. When your mind is stayed on God, then the Lord will give you perfectness. Hallelujah. Amen. So let your mind be set upon God. In every situation that is threatening you, in every situation that the devil is using to frighten you, let your mind stay on God. For he has already promised that he will be with you even to the end of it. When your mind is settled on God, then you will have that peace. That peace. With 
Paul said that Pastor sort of understanding, can we have a look at that one? That's a nice scripture in Philippians chapter 4. Philipp Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Let's read from verse 6, 7. Philippians chapter 4, please. As I bring the curtain to you. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Verse 6. Okay, be careful for nothing, but the integrity by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, sir. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Ah, we see, we can't go deeper into this. Other than that, you see, even people who were condemned to be killed had their less in stores. They had cause to praise God, and in the praise, they were set free. So, the peace of God will pass into people who will not understand why, of all what you are going through, you are calm. Because you know whom you have believed. And that is exactly what the Spirit of God has exactly what Paul is telling us. That this special grace or special character of God, being peace, will engulf your whole being. Irrespective of what you are going through, irrespective of what you are experiencing, irrespective of what somebody is threatening you with. The peace of God will pass some understanding, puts your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so take note that the apostle is saying that never fret and never throw out your hands or put your hands on it. See, I've also come to realize when you are facing any situation that threatens you, the moment you put your hands on your head or the moment you start crying, you are more or less defeated. If you hear my news, you hear something that relates to you, relates to your loved one, may the Spirit of God energize you to face the thing. And if even in the face of what you are hearing, and you have the word of God, just call the word. Rather than just giving up to cry. When you give up to cry, the devil more or less has won. Hallelujah. In the face of all that, you are at peace. Because you know who is in control. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The last, I've talked about the word of God. I've talked about prayer. I'll talk about now Thanksgiving. And I did talk about faith. And so I'm talking about Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, he said, Rejoice. If you read it from verse 16, he said, Rejoice evermore. Pray with one season. And uh, 18, then he said, but in everything, give thanks unto the Lord, for that is the way of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. It might be difficult. It might go contrary to what you were expecting. But the Bible will say that rejoice evermore. In all things, he said, pray. You pray and give thanks, for that is the way of God in Christ Jesus concerning or concerning me, concerning you. It is difficult for you, but the Lord who spread out the heavens by his mighty right hand, he who formed you from the dust of the ground, who breathed the breath of life into you, he knows how to take. It is possible that whatever you are facing today, no, the moment you are facing it, it is possible for the Lord to tell it as a dream. Oh, yeah. who believes that? It does happen. You are, you 
you find yourself in a situation and it's physical and it's threatening. But he who laid the foundation, he who can take the mind and the, and the sight, and the, the Lord can really turn that physical situation as a dream. Before you realize that you are really panicking and you are your man. And look at this man. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 In all things, or in everything, we give thanks. For that is the way of God that Jesus concerning us. Shall we be outstanding? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I look at this fruit of the Spirit. I have a room. Now, you know, we will. Go on to patience. Oh, another, another nice one. Abu Tere. So who Abu Tere? Yes, we got a test. We just we we get the intestines of uh, the ants. Huh? Patience, and then we have gone to kindness, then meekness, self-control. Hallelujah. Read this I'm very thankful that we may, I'm thankful whether we will have time to go into every one of them. But the Lord will bless you, the Lord be with you, and be at peace with yourself. For the Lord Himself has reconciled you to the Father. Hallelujah. And as Jesus Christ, when He, 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 he resurrected and came back, He never said peace be unto you when he was with them. But when he resurrected and met the disciples, he said, Peace be unto you. The same pronouncement I make towards you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When he came back, he said, That spirit should be with you, that your heart will be at rest. May your heart be at rest in every circumstance that you find yourself, in every situation that you find yourself, in anything at all that the devil will throw at you. May your heart be at rest. May you have the peace of God. That peace that passes from understanding. May that peace put your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And that Christ will never fail. Let's see.